The Deco D165 DC crimper and the similar but more powerful D206 DC are easy to use feature packed machines that deliver superior performance. They include their own built in hydraulic pump. The D165 DC has the capacity to crimp up to one and a quarter inch ID hose. The D206 DC has the capacity to crimp up to two inch multi spiral hose with the optional double angled eyes. The machines include a number of impressive features. The on off switch also serves as a circuit breaker. The gauging mechanism delivers a high degree of accuracy and reliability thanks to a micro crimp adjuster. Four strain rods make the crimper precise and more durable. A coupling stop and ram retraction stop facilitate jobs involving multiple hose assemblies. On the D165 DC, both the cone base plate and the new style cylinder are made from aluminum, which saves weight for improved portability. The D165 DC also includes a pneumatic remote start-stop switch that can be actuated with either hand or foot pressure. A few simple procedures will allow you to receive the optimum performance from your D165 DC. The first step is to check that you have all the necessary components. The following color-coded split die sets are standard with the D165 DC. The .520 red die set, the .670 yellow, the .830 blue, the 1.100 green, the 1.320 black, the 1.500 brown, and the 1.730 silver. Bubble dies for AC fittings and knockdown bell sets are also available. The D165 DC is shipped fully assembled, including crimper, mounting base, and micro crimp adjuster. In addition, the following are standard items. A detachable compression ring and pusher plate. A tube of high pressure dye lubricant. And support materials, including an operator's manual. Before setting up the crimper, locate it in a well-lit area on a sturdy workbench. Depending on your use, you may want to fasten it to the bench. Position the machine close to an electrical outlet so that it can be plugged in without using an extension cord. As mentioned earlier, the D165 DC comes fully assembled, calibrated, and ready to use. The hydraulic pump has a maximum output of 10,000 PSI, so be careful around the machine and respect this power. The internal relief valve is set at the factory. Don't change it. The ram moves down with a force of 62 tons, so be extremely careful not to put foreign objects in its way. As a safety precaution, do not mix and match Deco hoses and couplings with those of another manufacturer. Before using the machine, open the cap on the pump reservoir to check the oil level. The level should be one and a half inches below the top of the tank. The sight glass on the back of the tank makes it easy to see and measure the oil level. If oil must be added, fill with ISO 46 weight oil. If the machine will be used in temperatures of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or colder, ISO 32 weight oil should be used. As noted, the unit is calibrated prior to shipment, but a calibration check should be performed to be certain the crimper is operating properly. To check calibration, first place the standard pressure plate in the base of the crimper. Next, place any standard die set on top of the pressure plate as shown. Then lubricate the compression ring and place it on top of the die set. Slide the pusher onto the stud of the hydraulic ram. Set the micro crimp adjuster to 95. Now turn the power switch on. Next, press and hold the start switch until the ram extends, fully seats all components, and fully closes the die set. On the D165 DC machine, the calibration is correct if the motor shuts off approximately one second after the pump starts to build pressure. The sound of the motor will change when this happens. If the shutoff time is not approximately one second, the crimper must be recalibrated. Recalibration is accomplished by adjusting the actuator in the micro crimp adjuster. To make this adjustment, hold the micrometer barrel with a 5 16 open end wrench then rotate the stem either in or out with a 5 30 seconds hex key. If the time from which the pump started to build pressure was less than one second, rotate the stem clockwise. 
If the time was greater than one second, rotate the stem counterclockwise. Once correct calibration has been verified, the machine is ready for crimping. The first step in the process is hose preparation. A length of DR1 hose and two DC06 slash 06 MP couplings have been provided with your crimper. The hose cut length is determined by starting with the overall length of the assembly and subtracting the cutoff factor for each coupling. For this information, see the coupling specifications in the Deco Hydraulics catalog. To ensure that the hose bottoms out in the collar, mark the insertion depth of the hose before inserting it into the coupling. Use a paint pen, yellow tire marking pen, or similar marker. Next, the coupling should be fastened securely in a vise and the hose pushed into the coupling with a clockwise twisting motion until the hose bottoms out, at which time the ferrule or shell will have covered the mark on the hose. If a vise isn't available, the coupling can be pushed against any material that is softer than brass. Now it's time to set up the machine for the crimp. The first step is to identify the correct die set using the crimp specs in the Deco Hydraulics catalog. Select the correct die set from its storage location. You will need the .670 yellow die. Next, lubricate the pressure plate with the Easy Crimp M High Pressure Grease or its equivalent. This is the only grease approved by DECO for the D165 DC crimper. Insert the pressure plate into the aluminum base. Also lubricate the faces of the die fingers. Next, place the die set on the pressure plate. The ring goes on the bottom to enhance the visibility of the assembly being crimped. Lubricate the compression ring and place it on top of the die set. Next, attach the pusher to the stud at the base of the ram. Now turn the micro crimp adjuster gauge to the correct setting of 77. Some Deco couplings come with a knurl on the ferrule to indicate the crimp length. On ferrules without knurl marks, consult the crimp specs for the proper position of the coupling in the dies. Looking down from the top of the die set, it's easier to see the relationship of the die fingers to the ferrule location. Center the knurl in the tops of the die fingers. Next, seat the die set in the pressure plate by firmly pushing down on the compression ring. Then, check the alignment of the die set. Remember, improper seating or overlapping the dies will result in damage to the dies and pressure plate. Caution. The notches on the die set must be completely covered by the compression ring prior to the start of the crimp. If the shoulder notch is visible, a larger die set is needed. Crimping with an incorrect die size could result in personal injury. If you're using the coupling stop, it can now be set to the point where it just touches the coupling. This facilitates repeated crimping of identical assemblies. Everything is now ready to start the crimping process. The alignment should look like this, with the dies level and the seam straight. This will ensure proper crimping. Start the pump using the pneumatic switch. The ram will come down and make contact with the pusher plate, continue through its cycle, and crimp the assembly. The machine will stop automatically. As the ram retracts, magnets in the pusher will lift the compression ring releasing the hose, but still allowing the compression ring to align correctly for the next crimping operation. After the pump shuts off, if you will be making another assembly like this one, twist the ram retraction stop lever to lock the stop rod in place at a position where the hose and fitting can be easily removed. This will prevent the ram from retracting all the way, saving time on repeated crimps. Once the crimp has been made, it's time for the crimp diameter check. Using dial calipers, take four measurements of the crimp diameter between two of the flat surfaces in the center of the ferrule. The crimp is in spec if the average of four crimp diameter measurements is plus or minus five thousandths of an inch from the specified crimp diameter. If most hose and coupling combinations produce crimps that are within spec, but a certain combination always crimps out of spec, the gauge setting used with that specific combination needs to be adjusted on your unit. Because gauge settings are approximate due to matching tolerances of the metal surfaces of the dies and pressure plate, the finished crimp diameter may not be accurate on every size. Adjust them as follows. 
If the crimp diameter is smaller than the specification, the crimp is too tight and the setting number should be decreased. If the crimp diameter is larger than the specification, the crimp is too loose and the setting number should be increased. Each single digit change on the gauge will result in a difference of five thousandths of an inch in crimp diameter. Adjust the gauge until the problem combination is in spec. You may want to record this new setting for future reference. If all your hose and coupling combinations show an identical error, then your unit needs recalibration. The recalibration adjustment is similar to the one described after the initial calibration check. To recalibrate the machine, hold the micrometer barrel with a 5 16 wrench, then rotate the stem with a 5 30 seconds hex key. One turn of the stem is equal to approximately 28 thousandths of an inch. Rotate the stem clockwise for a tighter crimp or counterclockwise for a looser crimp. Then crimp another hose. Again, make four measurements with calibers and average. If the crimp is still out of spec, repeat the procedure. Remember your Deco Hydraulics catalog is a valuable source for information on safety and hose selection and preparation. With responsible operation and the proper maintenance, the Deco D165DC and D206DC crimpers can provide years of trouble-free service.